for the nice organization for this Windows school. Uh, what I'm talking about is uh, Spark layer solutions to singularly perturbed stimulate the system of coupled shooting equation. Uh, my talk includes four parts. In the first part, the introduction, introduction. In the second part, I introduce the existence of this energy solution, and then the same thought the behavior of this energy solution. And uh, in the end, I give some remarks on the problem. Uh, in this talk, we are concerned with the two coupled shooting system like this. Uh, this is the shooting system, and we consider here omega is the bounded domain in Rn. Here n is less than 3, and the mu1, mu2 are positive constant. Uh, when omega equals to the whole space Rn and epsilon equals to 1, uh, the system S epsilon leads to investigate the falling problem. Uh, problem 1.1 one one arises in the Hartree Fock theory for a double constant date, uh, a binary mixture of bone Einstein constant date in two different hyperfine states, 1 and state 2. Physically, U and V are the corresponding constant data amplitude. Mu J and beta are the intraspecies and the interspecies scaling lens. The sign of the scaling lens beta determines whether the interaction of state 1 and state 2 are repulsive or attractive. When beta positive, the interactions of state 1 and state 2 are repulsive, but in contrast, when beta is negative, the interaction of the state 1 and state 2 are attractive. Uh, this system 1.1, the first author to consider 1.1 is five. I know is Professor Lin and uh, Jun Chen Wei in 2005. Uh, in that paper, they proved that there exists a beta zero positive but sufficiently small such that for beta located in this interval, the system 1.1 has a least energy solution. Uh, in 2007, Seraka considered the problem 1.1 for the whole beta. Uh, actually, that proved that for beta larger than, less than the minimum of mu1, mu2, or beta larger than the maximum of mu1, mu2, the system 1.1 has a least end solution. But for beta located in this interval, the system 1.1 has no solution. Uh, in 2009, uh, ICOMA proved that for beta positive but sufficiently small, the solution of 1.1 is unique. Uh, more recently, uh, Yao and uh, Jun Chen Wei also studied the uniqueness of solution of problem 1.1. That proved that for beta positive but sufficiently small, or beta larger than the maximum of mu1, mu2, the solution of 1.1 is unique. But uh, for beta located in this interval, the uniqueness of the solution for system 1.1 is still open. Uh, when no omega is a bounded domain Rn on the delta bounded condition, namely the following problem, uh, there are also a lot of papers. Uh, the first paper is also by Lin and Jun Chen Wei in 2005. They obtained the existence of this energy solution S epsilon Y, which is dealing with the bounded condition, uh, by minimizing the certain Nahari manifold for beta less than beta zero. And they also discussed the, the, the asymptotic behavior as epsilon equal to zero. Uh, where they suppose beta zero sufficiently small, uh, more precisely, they point out that when beta is negative, the maximum points of two components of the least end solution approach differently positive, different points, uh, whereas when beta is positive, the maximum points of the two components of least end solution uh, 
各自拖给自。啊、uh, ，in two thousand nine, Dunster and Jun Chen Wei、uh, proved that the existence in turbo、uh, and sequence such that、uh, beta does not belong to this in turbo and does not、uh, equal to does not belong to this sequence. Then、uh, the delta boundary condition S epsilon one has a solution such that、uh, here. U epsilon and V epsilon develops a spike leak at the inner part of the domain. Uh, they also prove the non-degeneracy of the radial solutions in Rn. Uh, in 2010, when omega is the symmetric domain, possibly unbounded, Thomas Bach, Downs, and uh, Zhi Qiang Wang investigated the local and global bifurcation in terms of the parameter beta, which provides the priori bounds of the solution uh, to this system. Uh, in the following two papers, Jun Chen Wei and Tobias, uh, the two papers, they consider the multiplicity properties of the system when x equals to 1, but beta is negative. Uh, in this talk, we consider the system on the no unbounded condition, because before no one considered the bound, no unbounded condition, uh, namely this system S epsilon 2, uh, we also consider omega is a bounded domain. Uh, we call a solution U and V of S, S epsilon 2, which, is, which has a zero pole component. U identically equal to zero, or V identically equal to zero, called a standard solution. And the zero, zero is uh, referred as a trivial solution. So here, we consider the non-standard solution, which means that uh, both components are non-zero. Uh, the energy functional corresponding to the system is like uh, 2.1. It means that uh, the critical points of this functional corresponding to a solution of the system one, system S point S epsilon two. Uh, we consider this set n epsilon omega, which is a corresponding Nakhri manifold. Uh, <coughs> why, if a solution of the system S epsilon two such that both components are non-zero, which must be located in these sets. So this is the Nakhri manifold in epsilon omega. And we consider C epsilon is the infimum confined on these sets in epsilon omega. Uh, firstly, we prove that uh, our main result is 2.1. For any epsilon positive, if beta less than the minima of mu1, mu2, or beta larger than maxima of mu1, mu2, uh, there exists a least energy solution, u epsilon, u epsilon, to this s epsilon 2, which achieves the epsilon. Uh, when beta larger than the maximum, but less than the minimum, larger, larger than the minimum, but less than the maximum, then the system has no solution. In fact, uh, suppose Omega epsilon is the least energy solution to the scalar case minus epsilon square minus Laplace u plus u equals u square under no environment condition. Then, when beta is now zero but less than minimum mu and mu two, or beta uh, larger than the maximum mu and mu two, the couple, this couple, is the least energy solution where uh, k equals this and l equals this. So it means that uh, when beta is non-negative, then the least energy solution of the S epsilon 2 can be expressed by the scalar case solutions in this way. Uh, uh, I just mentioned some results about the scalar cases. For this system, 2.2, there are a lot of words. Uh, firstly, 
considering the spike less solution is by Professor Ning and Takaji. They considered in 2003 the existence of least energy solution and also the asymptotic behavior of the least energy solution. That's the first paper. And afterwards, in uh, 1999, the Pino and the firma, they obtained the same results with Ni and Takachi for, for more general non-guarantees. And uh, more recently, Professor Bien, in this paper, they extended the bound results for almost optimal general non-guarantees. Uh, we suppose omega epsilon be a least energy solution of 2.2, which is scalar cases, and for p equal to 3, n less than 3. Uh, we define these two numbers, s mu epsilon and t mu epsilon. Uh, and we also define capital M epsilon is uh, the corresponding Nahri manifold for scalar cases. Then, uh, in the paper of Professor Ni and Takaji, uh, we will know that uh, this omega epsilon is the minimize of T1 epsilon and uh, mu power minus half omega epsilon is the minimize of T mu epsilon. In addition, we have this two equality. Uh, now we give some sketch about the proof of 0 0.1. It means the existence. Firstly, we departed two parts of 1 for beta is non-active. Firstly, we consider the case beta is non-negative, but less than minimum or larger than the maximum. We consider together. Uh, we firstly, in step one, we consider this system. This is a linear system. And uh, we solve this system. We find that the beta non-negative less than this number or larger than the maximum, then this system 2.3 has a unique solution KL, such that both components KL are positive. Actually, we can calculate that K equals to this number, mu2 minus beta over mu1 times mu2 minus beta square, L like this. So this, uh, if beta located in this, then this team has a two positive unique solution. Uh, now, we will claim that this couple, square root k omega epsilon, square root a omega epsilon, belongs to the natural manifold we defined. And uh, if we prove this, then by calculating the, this function, function law, we will find that uh, c epsilon less than this number. This is the first step. Uh, the second step, in the Third step, uh, we prove the inverse inequality. Namely, we prove the following 2.6. And uh, it means that C epsilon larger than this number. Uh, how to prove it? We take a minimizing sequence uh, UMVM, which belongs to the Nachman manifold and which such that the functional J epsilon UMVM converges to C epsilon. Uh, firstly, it's easy to check that this sequence is bounded in this Hilbert space. Uh, we set two numbers, Kcm and theta m, like this. And uh, the definition of S1 epsilon is the infimum. We will find that this inequality. And uh, this, this equality, because of that, belong to the natural manifold. And uh, then using the uh, whole inequality, we will have 2.7 and 2.8, this two inequality. And we, if we add up these two inequality together, it results in the following 2.9. This is one inequality. Uh, secondly, uh, if we set Kcm1 is uh, this number and uh, Kcm2, Theta m1 is this number, uh, then we will obtain this, the three inequalities, 2.10. Uh, and if we let Kc m2 and Theta m2 like this, then 
from 2.10, we will 2.11. This is uh, three inequalities. Uh, <coughs> we will find that if beta plus non-negative or beta less than minimum or less, larger than the maximum, then the three-half space one is uh, t1 times t2 less than very small number. This is infinitely small number. And the second is uh, t1, t2, which satisfy mu1, t1 times beta t2, now negative. And the third one is uh, beta t1 plus mu2 t2, now negative. Then the three half spaces meet at most in a triangle in this space T1, T2. And this triangle shrinks to the original as M goes to infinity. And which implies this number, because M1 converges to K and the theta M1 converges to L as M goes to infinity. And this, we proved that uh, the inverse inequality, namely C epsilon larger than this number. So it means that this couple is really the least energy which achieves C epsilon. This is the proof for beta uh, larger non-negative. Now we consider beta is uh, negative. We choose uh, also a minimum sequence, UM, VM, and uh, which satisfy, it means that the J epsilon, UM, VM converting to C epsilon. Uh, we firstly claim that there exists C0, which is positive and independent of M such that uh, uh, the integral UM power 4 and VM, the integral which is, has this low bound, uh, this is very important. Now we prove this. And uh, actually, uh, we similarly with the, with the definition in the when beta is non negative, we also set a theta m, because the m, theta m like this. And uh, then we will obtain these two inequalities, 2.13 and 2.14. I want to point out that from this from this number to less than this, we used the fact that beta is negative. Since beta is negative, this integral over omega is negative, this integral over omega is negative, so we omit it and less than this. And uh, from this two, from this two inequality, we easily to obtain that uh, there really exists C0 positive, such that this in quality holds. Uh, now, <coughs> firstly, we, since this sequence is a minimized sequence, we easily can verify that they are bounded. And since they are bounded, we can suppose that UM converges to U and VM converges to V weakly in this space and uh, strongly in L4. And uh, then we will support, we will, because we have the low bound, we will find that both compose the limit u and we are all non zero. And we also have this inequality. Uh, and also 2.15 and 2.16. Uh, on the other hand, we also have this two, uh, this two inequality and also this. Uh, the Bavi 2 inequality, which assures that the following matrix is positively definite. Since this matrix, it means the coefficient matrix for this system is infinitely definite. So this infinite, this system, the variable is S1, S2, has a unique solution. We suppose the unique solution is S1 and S2. If we can prove the unique solution of this system 2.17 is uh, such that the unique solution is 1, 1, then we prove the results.
and uh, y because if s y equals to y is equal to y, then actually we show that the limit u and v belongs to the Nakhri manifold. This is since this this is the limit uh, and also we this is the limit of the minimized sequence. As long as we prove this u couple u and v belong to the natural manifold, actually we prove that uh, this u and v which achieves C epsilon. And uh, this proves the results. So I omitted how to prove this this system. Actually the solution is uh, uh, S1 and S2 are equals to 1. Uh, this is the existence of the system. And uh, in the third part, we consider the asymptotic behavior. We consider as epsilon goes to zero, the maximum point uh, corresponding to u epsilon and v epsilon, where is the limit of the maximum point. Uh, we suppose capital U of X is the unique solution of the following scalar cases. It's, it is the property of this capital U is well known. Indeed, uh, we know that uh, this capital U of X is radially symmetric and which strictly decreasing as the absolute of X goes to infinity. And also we know this uh, uh, property. We know the uh, the corresponding functional to the 3.1 is this, and we also know this C star is the mount, this is the mountain pass value and also the least energy value, which equals I capital I of capital U of X. Uh, we still suppose omega epsilon T Y epsilon is defined in section two, which uh, which is uh, the this the energy solution for the scalar cases. And uh, we know that by the paper from me and the Takaji in, 2000, in 1993, they have this omega epsilon and the TM, TY epsilon has these two properties. Why? We know that if X epsilon is the maximum point of omega epsilon, then H x epsilon goes to H x bar. Here, H of x denotes the mean curvature of the boundary. This means that uh, the maximum point of omega epsilon goes to uh, the limit of the maximum point x bar is the maximum point of mean curvature. Secondly, the value T Y epsilon behave like this. This is the results uh, by me and the Takaji. So we also know this uh, this property. Uh, now I give the re the results. Uh, firstly, for beta non-negative but less than minimum or larger than the maximum, we have the following theorem. <coughs> Suppose u epsilon v epsilon is the least energy solution for the non boundary condition, and the p epsilon q epsilon are the corresponding maximum point u epsilon and v epsilon. Then, as epsilon is small enough, both component u p epsilon and q epsilon are all located on the boundary. Moreover, uh, as epsilon goes to infinity, goes to zero, this number, the absolute of P epsilon minus Q epsilon over epsilon, this number goes to zero, uh, which means that as epsilon goes to zero, the two point Q ep, P epsilon and Q epsilon goes to together. And also we know that the value H of P epsilon, which is the mean curvature at the P epsilon goes to the maximum and also H of Q epsilon also goes to the maximum. Uh, furthermore, if we let capital U of V like this, capital V of V like this, then these two functions, capital U epsilon, capital V epsilon, 
has a limit, which is kept U0 V0. And this couple kept U0 V0 is a least energy solution for this space, for this system, which is defined on the half space. And now we know, we know some properties for, for the solution of this system. Uh, we give some remark. Uh, since for beta non-negative, then we know that the couple is the least end solution. But uh, we also know the property of omega epsilon, also the asymptotic behavior. So it, may, it seems that if our results are trivial, actually, we don't know. Firstly, normally, the least end solution for the non boundary condition defined on the boundary domain, which is uh, not not unique, it in, but uh, our results is given the uh, same total behavior for general list energy solution, which might not be this. Uh, now I give some sketch about the proof. For, <coughs> uh, firstly, uh, we if since the couple, the two couple, the couple squared k omega epsilon squared a omega epsilon is the least energy solution. If we calculate, uh, then we will find that the c epsilon satisfy this this inequality, which means that this uh, epsilon over minus n times c epsilon has uh, this low bound. And uh, this low bound gives us that uh, uh, as epsilon goes to zero, this point, uh, this value must uh, go to zero. Why? Because if they are does go to zero, we will obtain a contradiction with this inequality. Uh, since they go to together, we can uh, define two functions, theta capital U epsilon, theta capital V epsilon like this. This is the same way, same point of P epsilon, P epsilon. Then, uh, this is a little bit complicated, but uh, the main idea is that uh, uh, we will give a, <coughs> give a low upbound about uh, the C epsilon. The main idea is that we define a new function, capital epsilon y and capital V epsilon y like this. Uh, which defined the, in, the, in the half space. We know that uh, uh, U epsilon and uh, V epsilon defined only defined the domain omega. So this this two function defined on the omega epsilon, which is the rescaling of the function uh, domain omega. We define two function capital epsilon y and the V epsilon y in the half space omega. Rn. So this is how to define. With this uh, scale, uh, we will prove that uh, this is the proof about uh, I, I skip, and we will give this uh, low bound. We prove that uh, this C epsilon actually large or equal than this number. Uh, secondly, if we choose any p belong to the boundary, we you, we we, te we testify uh, the C epsilon like this. Then we will prove that this C epsilon also has the up bound like this. We if we see three point nine, three point ten, we will find that uh, the limit of p epsilon and q epsilon, the common limit of p bar must be the maximum point of the mean curvature. This gives a proof when beta is non-negative. Uh, when beta is negative, then we have the following property. When you have some, you have some list and the solution, then they have this low bound. And uh, we also know that as epsilon sufficiently small, then the maximum point of P 
and soon KL soon are located on the boundary. Moreover, as L soon go to zero, the two point P L soon minus Q L soon over L soon goes to infinity. But the, this value, the main curvature at the P L soon goes to the maximum and also main curvature at Q L soon also goes to the maximum. This property, this property means that uh, they repel each other in the sense of this value goes to infinity, but if the omega, the boundary of omega only have one maximum point, the main curvature only have one maximum point, it means that this property means that uh, P epsilon and Q epsilon might go to together. Uh, use this property if we set a capital U epsilon, capital V epsilon like this, then the limit capital U epsilon is omega y, and the, the limit of capital V epsilon is omega 2, where omega y and omega 2 is the corresponding this energy solution for the scalar cases. This is uh, the, the asymptotic behavior. Uh, now I also give some sketch of the <coughs> proof. Uh, this capital U of X is a unique solution for the lead scalar cases 3.1, and then we know that this function is a unique solution for uh, 3.13. Uh, this one, this is uh, the unique solution, and. Uh, if we choose two point P and Q belong to the boundary, that does, that does not equal, then uh, we define two functions, capital P epsilon and the capital Q epsilon like this, then it's easy to check that the exist two point uh, uh, T, two number T epsilon S epsilon such that uh, this, this uh, value equals to the maximum, and which means that the couple belongs to the corresponding Nash manifold. And by direct computation, uh, we have this, uh, this uh, estimate, which gives an uh, up bound, which is a little bit different with uh, when beta is uh, positive. And uh, now, <coughs> firstly, uh, this uh, uh, prove that uh, firstly we, I only did how to prove that goes to uh, goes to infinity we we easily can if we uh, we prove this in uh, this property by we suppose that goes to there remains bounded then we will uh, obtain some con contradiction uh, if suppose we have proved this Property, then uh, we suppose we define these two functions, capital U epsilon, capital V epsilon, uh, like this. Then uh, the limit of this couple is uh, satisfied the following, uh, the, following, uh, the following equation. It means that uh, uh, the limit of V two times must be zero. Uh, from use this property, we actually prove that uh, the limit of capital U epsilon is omega one, which is the unique solution for the scalar cases, and the limit of V epsilon is uh, omega two. Uh, now, this all this estimate does uh, to prove that uh, where is the limit of the maximum point uh, P epsilon and Q epsilon. Uh, firstly, we also give a low bound. Uh, low bound, uh, we just estimate this this value uh, function j epsilon u epsilon v epsilon, and uh, after calculation, we will find that uh, the li the limit p bar and q bar. Here, p bar is the limit of p epsilon, q bar is the limit of uh, 
Here I'm so then that satisfies this inequality. Here P and Q are arbitrary, which means that uh, here, since omega 1 and omega 2 are all positive, it means that uh, P bar and Q bar must be the maximum point of the mean curvature at boundary. So this is uh, the proof of, uh, for beta is negative. I give a remark. It is easy to check that when beta negative but uh, larger than this number, this couple is the solution. But if we calculate this uh, functional J epsilon, which as the epsilon go to zero, which converges to this number, since beta is negative, this number is larger than this. But from the above calculation, we know that uh, <coughs> the least energy less than this number. It means that uh, when beta is negative, the couple is the solution, but uh, it is not uh, the least energy solution. Uh, in the end, I give some remarks on the delicate boundary conditions. <coughs> so, also this uh, definition is just uh, similar with uh, Taija Lin and Ju Chen Wei. We also give the definition, the corresponding natural manifold, uh, capital N1, like this. And we also define this number C epsilon 1 is the infimum of this functional confined on this natural manifold. Uh, our main result is like this. Similarly with the normal boundary condition, when beta less than the minimum or beta is larger than the maximum, then system S epsilon 1, which is the delicate bound condition, uh, has the least energy solution, U epsilon, U epsilon, which achieves C epsilon 1, and also we have this estimate. Uh, moreover, uh, when beta located in this interval, the system has no solution. And also we, it is easy to check that this couple uh, is the least energy solution when beta is non-negative. Here, omega epsilon 1 is the solution for the scalar cases on the delicate rebound condition. So this is the, this result is almost the same with with the non boundary condition. Uh, I want to mention that uh, to prove the main results in Lin and we in this paper, uh, to obtain this estimate, they have two in their technical, they have to uh, suppose that beta, beta less than this beta zero, very small. But in our results, we does not this limitation. Uh, this is what I want to point out. <coughs> uh, now, I give the asymptotic behavior. Uh, we know that when beta non-negative, then uh, this couple is the least energy solution. And uh, we know the property of T epsilon. So uh, it's easy to, uh, it's easier to give uh, up bound for, for this number, C epsilon Y. <coughs> so uh, the, this is the same total behavior. Suppose u epsilon v epsilon is the least energy solution on the delicate bound condition, then when beta is non negative, then the p epsilon, k epsilon are the maximum point of u epsilon v epsilon respectively. Then as epsilon goes to zero, the, the value, this value goes to zero, it means that uh, p epsilon, q epsilon also uh, goes to together. And the limit satisfies this property. And the p epsilon, the limit uh, satisfies the distance from p epsilon to the boundary 
goes to the maximum, and the distance, oh sorry, here it should be Q. Here it, I wrote wrong. This is Q epsilon also goes to the max, maximum, and uh, if we define the two function, capital U epsilon, capital V epsilon like this, then the limit is like this. This is almost the same with non-bound condition. The only difference, this is defined in the whole space, but in non-bound condition, it's only defined in the half space. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>